Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all well. Um, it's Wednesday, the 14th of July, 8 p.m. here in the UK, and I'm really excited to be going live tonight because because I'm going to be interviewing one of my favourite photographers uh, from Sweden, from probably um, all from across my Instagram. So this guy is one of my favorite human beings his beard game is very very strong as well um <laughs> but um victor victor anderson is uh, the guy we're going to be speaking to with today and he became a full-time photographer in 2014 i'm sure he'll correct me if that's wrong but um i did pinch this off your website victor so in 2014 he became a full-time photographer and victor says that he's driven by the idea of being able to make his world a better place with not only photography but graphic design which some of you might not be aware that he does as well so we'll explore a little bit of that as well in that creative process as well but not to mention he's also um as i said he has a, a tremendous beard game so you will you will know him once you see him um but first of all can you see me can you hear me before we crack on before we bring him on um have we got a drink more importantly do we have a drink no we, we haven't got baileys tonight we've got what have we got this is a this is mahiki mahiki this is the bottle right here it's a coconut rum a bit like malibu but much better <laughs> and i've just realized that there is a penis straw inside that i can't actually physically get out that was from my stag do um they that everyone had uh other straws and i got the uh, i got the penis straw so tastes even better but this is mahiki so let me know if you can see me if you can hear me okay um today's been a really good day actually we um i, I finally bought a new camera um so for those of you who saw the poll earlier a lot of you thought it was the r6 but I plunged and I got the Canon R5. It's the first camera I've owned in nine years. So it's really, really nice to own a brand new camera. Nothing wrong with the Mark III. I'm going to sh probably shelve it or probably put it in a glass box like Peter McKinnon has done with his camera because there's no way I can sell that. I do want to find out, though, how many shutter accus acquisitions I've done on that. I'm really interested to know. It'd be interesting to find out. But enough about me. Let's get on our guest tonight. So let's just see who we've got Um First of all, before we bring uh, Miss M on, we've got Mark Thompson here. Hey, Ma hey, Mark, how you doing? We've got Callum here. Got a gorgeous, uh, what is it? Got a got a gin ginger drink, and I'm all set. Silver's all set. Uh, Graham's here. We've got Francis. We've got all, oh, thanks for all, all your time. Hey, Francis. Uh, yay for, yay for new, nay for new, ugh, yay for new gear. <laughs> thanks for being here, Steph. Uh, well, guys, let's bring on uh, Victor. So let's just see if this all works. So, Victor, can you see me? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you loud and clear, and I can see you. Yes, Tommy. Hey, Victor. Thank you so much for being here, man. How are thank you? you? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. And I think I need to correct like the, the white balance and the color correction of my, my lights because I'm blushing so bad from that intro. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so so kind such kind words and uh, likewise i am blown away by your work as well and you have been through my my journey been a huge inspiration for me and oh, your man. Uh, youtube series has been a great source of uh, inspiration and knowledge <laughs> so I'll, right back at you oh thanks so much man i'll um i'll, I'll give you that 20 pounds later thanks for that <laughs> right back at me um thanks so much for being here man um well let's um let's uh, first of all have you got a drink i got a drink i got this it's a very rare kind of drink i, I got from i think uh, the grocery store uh, you have to brew it for exactly three or maybe four minutes mm. um it, with hot water to make this delicious brown uh, liquid called coffee uh, which i am drinking with a very non-sponsored mug <laughs> Oh, we we are big coffee coffee lovers. I know that um we we do like to do the the odd Nespresso uh, Instagram story, don't we? <laughs> yes, gotta gotta have some espresso. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I I can't drink coffee this late. I was just saying before we kept before we came on, like I I can't drink coffee this uh, this late. So that's why I've, I'm on the alcohol. But um I know that you had a few technical difficulties, but I'm so glad that you're that you're here and you're able to over overcome those. And there's no audio issues now. So uh, hopefully. Um, we can we can crack on we can crack on well well first of all um victor let's start from the very beginning and tell me and explain to me how you got into photography and why you ended up with portraiture more more so than anything else but they're gonna say like how far back do you want to know 
Okay, well let's let's start off then maybe at the start of the the career when it became full time. Like what how how did you progress? So a lot of people watching are maybe um people that do photography in their spare time and maybe are looking to do this professionally. So maybe you can go from the point of when you made that jump from what you were doing. Oh, and please tell me what were you doing before and then how did you make that jump into full time? Okay. Um, so, okay, then, then, then I think I need, have, need to have to go to a bit further back. Um, I, I studied uh, fine arts in high school. Um, mm -hmm. I was majoring mostly, I mean, I was not majoring, I was studying everything, graphic design, illustrations, uh, like print, uh, like, and of course, photography. Uh, and during that time, I was like dead set to become a graphic designer and um, illust ill an illustrator. I wanted to draw comics, I wanted to draw like uh, paintings, I wanted to draw and, and, and paint. Uh, back then, uh, I honestly thought and t told some people very um, abruptly that photography is not a real art because it's just pressing the button. <laughs> uh, real, real art comes from the, the, the stroke of a pencil. Uh, from uh -huh. a, a brush. Um, anyway, so I quit high school. I thought I was going to like, yay! I am, I am uh, graduated. I am 19 years old. I am gonna be a graphic designer. I am qualified. Uh, spoiler: I was not qualified at all. Um, so I started working at a an Apple retail store uh, while being a part-time freelance graphic designer. Okay. Um, and I think I was 18 when I first got my camera, but I never used it much. Uh, however, I did have a couple of gigs uh, as an um, illustrator and graphic designer during this the, the, my, my, my part time part time tide time. Yeah. Um, and the money I earned from that, I spent on camera gear because there's not that much gear you can buy as an illustrator. Like you get get some pens or papers. And then I made a career uh, at this retail store. I became a store manager and I got uh, a lot of responsibilities nation, uh, through, throughout the, the nation from doing designs and um, like uh, price tags and like really boring design stuff. But I did it. I did uh, some uh, commercial photography for some event. We did really boring stuff, really. But I, I, that was what I was doing. And then one day I just got so sick of that work. I was like, I asked. I think I, actually I was uh, on Iceland uh, in a rented like Honda Civic. Uh, and for anyone who's been on Iceland, you know that the uh, roads are absolute horrible. Oh, I yeah. mean, if you can call that roads. Um, yeah. So I sat there that, that in that very cheap, small car, cramped up. It was minus some degrees. We were sleeping in the car and I was having the worst time of our life, um, me and a couple of friends. And I said like, Shit, this is what, I'm, what, what I want to do for a living. I'm going to quit my job when I come back. You made um, that decision there in Iceland? Yeah, there and then, uh, in the car, right outside of the, the um, waterfall, Skogafoss. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I made that decision. Uh, I came home. I pretty much the next day uh, called my, my supervisor and said, like, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to call it quits. And, but I still worked uh, part time. I still do actually work part time in this retail store, like on weekends for some extra income. Okay. Um, which saved me during the pandemic. So no shame in having an extra mm. gig because last year I made very little, very little money, uh, and without that extra gig, I would have not survived. Um, and that that's basically the step. I had no plan. I had no money. I had no savings account. I had some gear. Uh, but I had like I, what I had was this motivation that like I'm I'm gonna do this. I. I the, my my um, the alternative being in this store in this nine to five kind of an environment I just couldn't have it. So and then the first couple of years, maybe the oldest, just the first year, I only uh, did design. I di didn't have any photo work because I didn't focus on it either. And then during the beginning of my second year, uh, a friend of mine came like, "Hey, I have an idea for a uh, project we can do." You want to tag along and I'm like yeah sure and then we discussed it and I uh, before this project bought my first set of flashes and I was like I don't know really what this is but um, I need flashes and hey why not I had some money saved um, so I bought them did this this um, uh, this job and earned quite some money of it even though it was supposed to be a personal project we sold the images for quite some money and um, that was very, it was like, kind of like, yeah, you can make money from it, from this. And it was weird. 
Um, it was, a, that, well, it, I guess, was it almost the moment that contradicted your own thought way back when you, at your first thought of photography, how it was all just about clicking a button and not really much to be earned from it. Was that kind of then when you realized I think week. I had I think I had had that thought uh, had released that thought much earlier. Right. Um, it was that was that like teenage Victor angsty Victor talking uh, about okay. how uh, some arts are somehow superior to other arts. And yeah. I mean, I was apparently very pretentious back then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and anyhow, uh, where was I? Um, <laughs> So yeah, when this, this work was done, I spent all that money on a new camera without even thinking about future, I spent a new camera. And then I sat there with this very expensive flashes because it was the pro photo flashes was way above my price range. And then I had my very expensive Hasselblad camera which was even further above my price range. And I was like, so what I'm supposed to do with this? Like, what, sh what should I do? And one thing that I've had enjoyed during the, year, the, the years of just messing around with my camera was whenever a friend of mine posted my picture of them as a profile picture on, on Facebook. That was just something I enjoyed. It always got a lot of likes, it always got a lot of comments. Um, so it was just an enjoyable thing for me. So I thought, like, okay, I'm going to try and make profile pictures. I'm going to try and make people's um, Facebook, Facebook pictures. And my initial idea was just to try and take pictures that people wanted to have as a profile picture because mm. they liked it. Not because it was a nice picture, but because they liked it. Mm. I had this um, urge to find or take a picture where I took a picture of the person, not the, uh, like the, not the human, but the person inside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, 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 then this whole pretentious thing comes back about with Chinese philosophers and stuff. Uh, but more on that in a moment. Um, but but the, basically what I did back then, I was like, I gotta make, make, uh, earn, like, um, make use of this gear I have. So I said, set out and said, I'm going to shoot one new person every week for the coming year. I thought, did you just, uh, I thought shooting, I one, shooting one new person a week. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. sorry. Yeah, yeah, Perfect. yeah. Uh, so I, I did that and I started asking my friends, uh, like people I trained with, uh, and my friends, partners, and just anyone I, 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 knew I was comfortable with. And then I felt like I need to somehow learn to shoot people I don't know. I need to learn to shoot people I'm not comfortable with because that is a kind of uh, treat I think is important if you want to work as a portrait photographer. You're going to have to know how to treat people and talk to people and mm. make people comfortable in front of the camera that you don't already know. Um, and then after a while I like ra ran out of friends that I um, uh, was comfortable asking or that I felt suited this, this whole idea. And so I, I went on this Swedish site called Statist, or like it's basically extras for movies. Right. Uh, and I made a post saying, hey, I have a project where I want to uh, capture your persona uh, in, fo in a photo, uh, where we're going to have a, have a coffee and take some photos and trying to see if we can figure out what your person is and capture that in still image. And I got like, I think in the first day, a hundred responses of pe from people that wanted to have a, have, have a picture. Oh, wow. Had, so I had to like go in my, my, my inbox and just choose people. I mean, choosing people to shoot based on their persona. And like, it was super hard because I didn't want to go on the people that I thought looked most photogenic. I just wanted to find these interesting mm. people. And it was super weird uh, having to like pick out people from this list that I wanted to work with. Super weird, but it, it worked well. And I, the fir I remember the first night I was, um, the first shoot I did in, in this studio actually. Um, it was like nine, Wait, it's 19, so like 7 in the evening. And um, I sat there and realized that this guy coming here, I have no idea who he is. I'm going to let him uh, him into my, my studio where I have all this expensive gear. <laughs> this is maybe, I don't know, is this a good idea? Um, it turned out he was one of the sweetest guys like ever, uh, working with children and, and uh, like a thera thera um, therapeut, therapist? Therapist. Therapist. Therapist, yeah. Uh, so he was a super kind guy, and um, he really ha let himself into the pictures. We just gave me more, uh, like, more engine flames, more "fiedel på elden" is a Swedish word, more fuel on the fire. Yeah, yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to continue this project and try and find more people to work with and more people to shoot and try and f really find a like formula almost on how to, can I find 
like how can I get a person to take off his his mask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this yeah, yeah. mask that everyone has, especially when we're new people, we are very uh, dependent on having these masks that say says something about who we are. Um, yeah, well, I think that's it. I think every portrait photographer's um, goal, isn't it, for sure, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because the mask is uninteresting. That's what everyone sees when I come underneath that. Yeah. Um, and so then, then it's, it's continued like that. I've, um, in uh, after the first year, I realized that like first year was most desi mostly design. The second year was fifty fifty design and photos. The third year, people didn't even reach out to me about design work. Um, it was just photos. And I realized that how much, however much I like really like typography and vector design and working with these like nitty gritty small details and having everything work with the golden ratio and circles and I, and, you know, however, I much love that it wasn't even comparable to photography, photography and especially uh, portraits and, and, and the light and flashes and off camera flash. It was just that was what everything that took up my whole headspace. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I just kept I just kept going and um, Eventually, I, I started assisting uh, other photographers. I did a lot of assisting and uh, to other photographers in, in the beginning. Uh, I had some colleagues or, and, and um, acquaintances coming to me like, I have this work. I don't know Flash. You do. Can you come and help me? And I said, said that. I'm like, sure. I don't know Flash very well, but sure, I'll do it. Um, and and they, the, those um, relationships later worked on to be where I did uh, to go with their clients or help them with other gigs. and. It just blossomed. It was um, rings on the water. It's another Swedish I, uh, idiom. Um, Ring, rings they, on the water. Yeah, you say that in English too. Uh, that's not one, not one I'm familiar with. But I kind of get the idea. Get you the drop, idea. You drop a stone in the water, and when that spreads out, it starts. Yeah. To, when, and hits other things, it starts new, new ripples. So, uh, so what? Um, what age or what, what kind of year was that realization then where you were getting so much more photo work and people were calling you up for more photo than design work? What, how far back are we at this point? I think that was about when I decided to get into the studio and that I think was 2016, if I'm not 15, 16. And those, those uh, years like just mesh to me, like merge. Yeah, yeah. It's well, blur. I think... I think it's safe to say that when when people look at your images, there's definitely a a style. There's a so I just see the the coffee being poured. And it was a nice sound there. <laughs> when when people see your images, it's a very clear clear style. I've got your Instagram up right here, and I'd love to go through some of your images if I may, and uh, get your um, get you to break down the creative process. But one of the things that really sticks out to me that I really like about your work is that you're not shy from using hard light and I think naturally people would when they're starting out in photography would maybe go to a softbox as a as a go-to modifier and whilst obviously softboxes have their place and you use softboxes what I really like about your images is that you're you're not shy to use hard light like this for example here and it just what your your images just almost feel like there's a bit of 3D element to it I Probably because of the, and I'd like to think it's because of the hard light and the depth of field, maybe that's kind of bringing you that closer in. But um, is that an intent, uh, an intentive choice that you like? Do you do you enjoy using hard light? Is that why I'm seeing a lot of it? Do you uh, in it, do you um, specifically go for hard light, or is it a mixture? Uh, definitely, I'm uh, very fond of hard light. Um... Of course, not everybody like this is this is this is going to be hard because not every face works well in hard light. Hard light is very hard to shoot in, uh, and of course, every face works in hard light. But it's harder to find the right angle or the right um, um, position for the light to work. But basically, what I've been learning so basically from from the beginning, I always wanted to try and recreate natural light in the in the studio. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the way, I realized that natural light is never soft, uh, unless it's like a cloud. And clouds, nobody goes out and shooting in the, when it's cloudy. You want sunlight, yeah. you want sunset, you want the, the light shining into the, into, the, um, into the lens, creating lens flares and all that. Oops, hold on. No worries, man. Um, so I realized that, that since natural light is, um, is hard by nature because the sun is hard, is hard then um, it's just something I realized I, I just realized it's natural. 
and it feels 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 nice. I totally agree, man. It's something that I am doing uh, and want to do a lot more of in my work is use hard light. I just and, and as you said, and you put it perfectly, is that um, natural natural light, unless it's a really cloudy day, is not as soft as a softbox. Nothing ever really is as soft as a softbox, like naturally to create a natural looking light. And I think that's probably why your images just look so realistic. Again, if we just go back, like even this environmental image here, it's just lovely. Maybe if you wouldn't mind for the viewers breaking down this particular image and telling us how you achieve this particular shot, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Um, so location work uh, is very uh, taxing, especially if it's, if it's cramped like this was. This was probably three meters in the in um, wide and maybe five meters deep. So it was a very cramped uh, space, and especially since the, uh, the one one way was a mirror. But what I did when I came here, I wanted to first. I realized I thought, okay, where does the light come from? What possible light source do we have here? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of, of course, first I see that the, we have the uh, the lamp in the background. Uh, so I set one light uh, shining up his his furthest side. Uh, yeah. I think we might be losing Victor again, folks. <laughs> I think actually Victor has a behind the scenes from this setup. Let me just scroll. I think uh, I think this is the same shoot. Let's just have a quick look at this while we get him back. It's nice shape with the, the Rembrandt. Oh, oh you're um, back. You're back. Sorry, Victor. I think we lost you for a moment there. Oh. I thought I thought you'd gone. I thought you were. Um, I didn't think. I, right, with, is it, uh, you're back. You're back. Is this uh, this video here? Is this from the same? This is the same shoot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Uh, yeah, it's filmed by my, my good friend and colleague, Brandon. Uh, who, who you guys probably seen on the uh, on my my channel some, um, but yeah, you can, there you can see a bit how I how I set it up. But basically, I try to find light to tie the person into the place we are, uh, and give a logical sense of where the um, uh, the main light is coming from. And then I had a big. Um, uh, What's the word? Umbrella behind me to just fill in the shadows and try and basically smooth out the the the, um, the hot spots that the flashes would create by illuminating everything a little bit more. Um, in in terms of your in terms of your learning, like um, your look at looking at your work, you, you look as if you've been you've been in this game for a lot longer than you have. How did you? Um, uh, did, did you uh, learn photography just through trial and error? Was it a mixture of that and watching uh, tutorials? And uh, you said that you you second shot or you assisted people. Was it mainly that or was it a culmination of all those things? It's a combination of all those things, definitely. I went to uh, some minor like three hour light courses from uh, other photographers. Uh, I came on one one big uh big and big um in my life it was a big turning point kind of how to use colored lights i went on the uh, workshop with the david bishop um that works a lot of pro with pro photo yeah um, uh, went on a workshop with him um when they released uh, the uh the color gel color color gel package for the for the ocf range yeah, and yeah. Um, I just attended that as like as a participant, and uh, that gave me a lot of knowledge from uh, how to use these um, um, colored lights and how to use color temperature. And it was actually from the part where he used a um, uh, he de de demonstrated how to shoot a still even like a still life uh, picture, um, and how he thought about that that I pretty much stole and took with me onto the um, my, my location work yeah. pretty much saying that all when when it's possible you got to have some kind of yellow light because very little light is bluish the yeah. lot of light is, is yellow the sun is yellow especially during the during the, the, the evening times and pretty much all our lamps are in some way yellow neutral lights are very unusual yeah. um, and, and using the combination of this yellow light and blue shadows to create a more natural looking image. Um, and then, of course, and to go back to your question, of course, being able to just experiment and experiment and experiment and experiment. Uh, I think, honestly, most of the images on my Instagram feed is 
uh, experimental shoots I did with with uh, acquaintances, um, uh, actors from this statist site. Um, so I've, I've just tried to every time I'm doing a new new shoot that's not like set you have, have to have it like this. I've tried something new. I've had this idea of how can I use the light in this or this or that um, uh, in this or that way. Can I have get this effect in camera without cheating? In, yeah. Cheating in, in Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, so that's a long, long answer to short. No, question. no, it was good, man. Um, Silver Lining was asking how how, how many lights in total was this shot? Um, that shot is uh, three lights in total. Three lights, and I think there's a reflector and a deflector. So I think on his shadow side, we ha I have a uh, black flag to cr increase the shadows on that side. And I'm not sure. Maybe you can see that in the video there's a re reflector, but I'm not sure if that fitted in there in the end. Um, but it, it's it's three lights, three three strobes. It's it's a beautiful image, and it's interesting what you say about you the use of color and how that not hardly anything is is blue. So you add, adding that 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 bit of color in there. It doesn't have to be full CTO. Um, it could be like the half or quarter. You could you get different stuff. You can also get straw as well. Like a, there's a a color that they call straw. I quite like that one. Using that instead of um, um, uh, instead of using CTO. CTO is always a go to, but a straw one's good as well that I like to use. But again, as you said, not everything is that fifty six hundred perfectly um, Kelvin uh, color. So by adding those accents of colors, you kind of make it feel a lot more realistic, which you've clearly done here and you've done very well thank you um so what i wanted to move on to is um uh so you mentioned briefly about you know the idea of being a portrait photographer and it's um putting the subject at ease uh, which is the ultimate goal for any portrait photographer so i was wondering if you wouldn't mind telling us if you have a have a way or a method or a process of how you like to put a model or a subject at ease First of all, I want to have them have them have some coffee. <laughs> Good um, idea. That's honestly when I'm having, having a one on one or one on two portrait session. Uh, the first part, I'm like I'm quite adamant to have yes, sit down. They don't have to have coffee, but I want uh, they can have some <laughs> drink, maybe basic water, tea, coffee. I sit down for if, if it's 15 minutes, that's enough. Uh, preferably more, uh, and just have a feeling for the other person uh, to see. Uh, do we have something in common? Maybe do we have nothing in common? Are we like I, I, I have been stuck on this word vibe like are we vibing? <laughs> yeah. um, because it's something I think you can feel of a person quite quickly like is this a person that has an energy that I can la la latch on to or is this a person that maybe can latch onto my energy? It's it's that kind of um, Bad habit coffee does put you at ease. I'm, Watch, watch your mouth. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just saw the comment coming in there. I just got to got to have coffee. But no, of course, you don't have to have coffee, a cup of tea, or or water, or like soda, soft drink. I just want to sit down uh, with with the person I'm shooting, uh, and um, just have a talk. And a Swedish person, as I am, we always try to have our our fika. So it's natural for me to like just have something in my hand when I'm talking. Uh, and when there's a silence, that's awkward. You have to go. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's that. Uh, and then when I feel that it's, it's time, I'm, I'm saying, okay, should we move into the studio? And yeah, we will. And then they go to fix their uh, like makeup and, and clothing, and I go down fixing the lights and, and the cameras and everything. And yes, chamomile tea is a good choice. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking on the comments again. What? what? Oh, chamomile tea. Yeah, I've never chamomile. had chamomile tea. Um, it's gorgeous. I, but, but coffee. Yeah, I, uh, I, so, so you start, so you start with the coffee, and then you just chat and you find something in common. So that's yeah. that, that's that's your process. And obviously, even better if you've so you've got a rapport there, you've got something to engage with, and uh, um, and some something you can chat about for the for the entire shoot. That's great. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, okay, so I want to do uh, kind of take a little bit of a different direction, and um, uh, so I wrote a note. Hang on, let me just read it back to myself, make sure it makes sense. Um, okay, yeah, so I remember one of the conversations we had quite recently, uh, Victor, where I was, uh, we were kind of talking about how some people online like to say, 
what do you want to see from from my YouTube? What do you want to see me do next on Instagram? And we were kind of saying how that might not be the best thing to say because if you're making content for other people, you're, you're just making content for other people. You're not making it for yourself anymore. And you kind of, I feel, I just feel like it's a really damaging thing to say. It's like you almost just become a puppet on a string. And I think when I said that to you, you said people follow people don't follow me because i t i i ask them people follow me because they want to follow the experiments and the personal projects that i'm doing i can't I, i'm not i'm paraphrasing i can't remember exactly what you said but i do remember just thinking that how true that is and i think it's a good exercise and for people to realize once you start gaining a little bit of a following don't fall into the trap of asking other people what they want to see from your own work it should be you it should be i want to see what you want to do right um, I know that you feel the same way. I wondered if you can elaborate on that because clearly you do that. That is what you do. you you just do your personal work. You and you experiment, right? You don't. You're not influenced by other people. Of course, I'm influenced by other people. But not like being a, a social person and a person that works with other people. Of course, I'm, of course, I'm influenced. However, uh, I, yes, you are you are right, and you're paraphrasing this good enough. I don't. I wouldn't be able to rephrase it as I said it. But yeah, um, for me personally, I um, so Instagram to me is just a game. It's like like any other mobile game. Uh, yep, I play it to get a high score. My high score doesn't matter. It just I try to get a bigger number every time I, I'm on the app. I'm playing by the rules. I'm following the algorithm. I'm just trying to get a bit higher high score. That's that's my idea of Instagram. And with, by saying that, my photography that I'm doing is not supposed to be followed or like influenced by this app. I'm trying to do what I think is interesting and what I think is fun. Uh, and then I put this on the app to try and get the high score. Mm. But I, so I'm always trying to, because as you say, the people that follow me on the app started following me because the, what, the thing I put out there was something I already created before uh, putting it on the Instagram. So, by, so if I put something I made for, for myself, uh, like this, uh, on Instagram, and then I ask, so and then, then person A comes and like this and says, I follow you, I want to see more like this. What's the point if I go back to this person that just said, said I want to see more of what you just did? And then I ask him, so what do you want to see now? Like, of course, he, wants to, or he or she wants to see more of what I just did. So that's, that's, that's my, my take on it. Of course, people, I get influenced and people get inspired. I, I get inspired from people. And a lot of my inspiration comes from Instagram, just swiping and seeing people's work and their BTS and sometimes seeing stuff that is not people's work and just seeing maybe i can recreate this in, in in the studio um but the idea of having this like instagram is separate from my work my work is on its own and i do my work mainly for me uh, and slash or my clients and then i put that onto instagram for you to see and you to uh, to um, get inspired by mm -hmm. um so i but but it doesn't work the other way around because the other way around, I would have to go first to my followers saying what we want to see and then put that on Instagram. But I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have followers. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's my, my take um, take on that. I think one of the things that um, the other side of that, where if you're someone and I, I've spoken about this uh, a couple of times on Instagram, if you if you're so far the other way and you have if you suffer with imposter syndrome and you don't feel like you're you're even good enough or you doubt yourself to uh, to put that thing out. And I think I think the coronavirus, the pandemic has definitely been high as, as heightened that within me, the imposter syndrome where we've I've just been out of practice for so long. And I think more people are aware of imposter syndrome. But one thing that I wasn't aware of that you brought to my attention recently was uh, was it is it called the Dunning Kruger effect uh, yeah. or the Dunning Kruger curve? Uh, yeah. The Dunning-Kruger curve. Now, I'd never heard of this. So would you mind explaining to us um, what the du Dunning-Kruger curve is? Can I get a pen and paper? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, yeah no I'll, problem. I'll be right back. <laughs> it's uh, th th This explanation is, is really, really great. I'd never even heard of it. Let me know, guys, in the chat if um, you've ever suffered with imposter syndrome or not feeling like you're you're good you, you feel good enough like you don't you feel like any minute now someone's gonna rat you out or you feel like someone's okay. gonna f find out that 
you're not you're not you're not good at what you do when, when in fact you are it's just that self-doubt um but uh, victor's going to explain to us something kind of similar to to this it's called and it's called the dunning kruger curve that i think you even um you did a video for me on instagram to show me um privately so i think you're about to do the same thing if um, it pretty much it's it's a hard thing to explain without having the curve in front of you because I, otherwise it would do, do like this and it's it's hard um <laughs> sorry man i'm gonna ha i'm gonna get you to then draw it out for me but i know it will explain it a lot better if you do yeah so uh, first of all if anyone knows this better than me please correct me yeah <laughs> so I'm, go I'm going to do my, in my my take on it as i've understood it um so basically what we have is a curve this was the most horrible pen ever but it works <laughs> so we have here we have we have the um here's the um let's see so I say, say this as, here's your confidence level let's say it's c uh confidence level on the on the high so how confident you are in something and here's time or experience let's say time slash experience and the idea of this is that when you start something out say you start um photography um, then your confidence and you start learning stuff you learn what bokeh is you learn mm -hmm. the aperture your shutter speed you start learning the stuff uh, then your confidence go up this is hard way up here where very fast you feel like on the top of the world yeah very yep. quickly um, but then the more you realize that that there is to this the more you understand about um, photography or whatever um, you're trying to to, uh, to learn then your your confidence uh, goes down again and it goes down to somewhere around here where where i personally think is where the imposter syndrome is because you 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 have experience you have knowledge you have spent time in this but your confidence is a very low it's not it's not zero it's never zero it's just it's, you see there's a small gap there it's never zero but then the interesting thing is that the more time you spend here it goes up again Oop. Goes up again. Uh, so here, how it look? How it looks? And the interesting part here is that you never come above the confidence confidence level that you do that you did in the beginning, mm -hmm. because in the beginning you were in a, in a search for a better word, ignorant to what you knew. You didn't know what you didn't know. And the more time and effort you put into this, the more you realize that what you don't know. You you like somewhere here, you maybe realize, oh wait. We have the, the um, inverse square law. What's that? And then you de delve deeper into that, and uh, so on, so further. So it's not until you start to realize what you don't know, and you start learning those things, that you come back up here. Um, so that, that that is basically the Dunning-Kruger curve uh, and, and effect that you are. Your confidence are very affected on by the. Um, um, level of time and experience you have in the in the subject and that's what i say hi to Annalise, my girlfriend that just commented that she related to the, to the Kruger curve hi babe <laughs> oh that's oh that, that's cool <laughs> thanks for being here <laughs> uh well I, th I think we can um af after that so just to surmise then so you start off when you learn something new you your confidence grows very quickly um in at the beginning but then you realize all the intricacies around it again yeah so that, here's just a surmise so that 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 peak of the curve at the top that's that's within the first few weeks or months of learning something new not necessarily photography anything really and then you realize when you start to go down that curve that there are so many more things to learn but then that's also where you said where you believe the imposter syndrome is at the um at at the down part at the at the bottom of the curve where you start to doubt and re and uh, question what you do know, and it, and then that hopefully, if you can bring yourself out of that imposter syndrome, you start to bring yourself back up. But it is interesting because you're so right. You never feel as confident as you did in those first few weeks or first few months when you first, for example, picked up a camera. You think, oh yeah, I can do this. This is all right. <laughs> it's never the case, is it? <laughs> no, never. And to be fair, that this is also, I realize now as I'm explaining this, new, new things pop up in my head. And I realize, I remember when I was on this peak uh, up high on the on the London and Krug curve, that was when I realized what like what bokeh was and like low depth of the field. And I felt really good very quickly. I took some selfies and stuff I thought was really cool. And I felt, and this confidence, this this idea of, wow, I, I know this thing. I, I know what to do with this. I can, I can 
can use this. That was what also inspired me to learn more and then again learn what I didn't know uh, and find out more and trying to actually develop myself even further because I had I got this confidence really quickly that made me want to explore it more. That's a great way to uh, to explain it, man. And uh, so many people here in the chat um, empathize and feel the same way. Luke says, I live in that valley. He li <laughs> I, I, mean, hope... I'm, I, I think I'm permanently, permanently somewhere around uh, here, maybe. I'm, I'm a little bit above it, but somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I felt at my lowest probably during, well, in England, it was lockdown three, but for everyone else, that was January time. I, I, that was when I think I felt at my lowest where I just I just lost all my confidence. But I feel like I, now as we're coming out of lockdown, I, I kind of feel like it's maybe a bit like a, a muscle that you exercise at the gym. Creativity can be like a muscle like exercising at the gym. And if you don't do it for a while, it's very quick to kind of fall off that ladder. We've got to get our batting average back mm -hmm. up again. We've Definitely. got to get and um, we've got to just get, get back out there and shoot, 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 shoot. The more you do it, the more you just feel you just, you just feel better about it and feel more confident because it's so easy to lose that confidence when you haven't done it for a while. Even more so if you're if you're being paid to do it as well because you doubt like, oh, the phone stopped ringing. But at the end of the day, this pandemic, it, it's going to pass and it is passing. Luckily, it's, it's hopefully it's going to be on its way out soon. So hopefully things will go back to normal. So just remembering that this is temporary. And sometimes in sometimes a year, I think... You know, we don't. We might have quieter periods, and you just have to realize that once you've been doing it a while, you realize that you have quieter periods and you have busier periods. Unfortunately, with freelancing, that is the nature of the beast. And like you, um, Victor, I I was working over the pandemic. I was working part time at a vaccine center, um, seeing all the oldies get their get their jabs, and there was no shame in it. I and mean, it's a bit of extra income, and uh, it was just nice to feel feel wanted feel like you're actually doing some good coming home from the end of the day and feeling feeling tired in a good way right yeah um so oh someone else said silver linings um i felt so horrible the first lockdown um had super depression but yeah hope hopefully silver linings I, i'm assuming that's not your real name but i like it anyway but hopefully you're coming out of it and you're going to feel much better once you pick the camera up and just keep on shooting um Moving that's, on. That's actually, in fact, we just may intersect there. I'm not, I'm not going. I'm not going to undermine any kind of depression. First of all, I'm, I'm not going to go in there and say that I'm not undermining depression or feeling depression at all. However, when I was in high school, I studied some psychology, and they, my my psychology teacher, teacher talked about how every every everyone goes up, have, have our ups and downs uh, based on on hormone levels and everything. We have ups and downs all the time. And what this, what she said is that it's during the, the, the part where we go up again from, from our lowest, when we're starting to go up, that's where our creativity starts. Uh, now it says that something went wrong. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you, man. Still hear yeah. you. Okay. I'm, I'm keeping on. Um, so it's, she said that, that, that when you are, are about to leave the down, then that's where you're most creative. And if you try and if you can't feel yourself well enough to feel when you are about to come out, when it's to get a little bit brighter, and if you force yourself to be creative, that can actually boost you way above, above the peak that you were um, initially uh, about to get to. Because the, the, the being creative and creating stuff is something that we, we as humans naturally want to do and we feel good mm -hmm. when we create things no matter if it's like building your deck for your house or repairing your car or uh, drawing something we like making and creating stuff and building stuff and fixing stuff so if we manage to latch on we can use this this uh, curve as a ramp and so we feel even better than we did would, yeah. have, would have done uh, and in my case when i've had my lows i've tried to force myself to be creative however hard it is because i know that just struggling through that will mm. push me up uh, but then again depression is a very deep subject and it might as well not work for everyone and i'm not undermining and talking down no. any person suffering from, from depression um but that, that that's something that she talked about and how we can use creativity to jump start ourselves in a way yeah I, I, that is so beautifully put victor i couldn't agree more uh, that's, that's so lovely i think and i think um i i don't know how you feel but i feel more creative when i have limitations i know this is kind of oh, yes. kind of going slightly 
into a different category, but I don't know how you feel. But I, if you've got so uh, what, during again during lockdown, um, I, I felt at, probably at my most creative actually um, during the first lockdown when I couldn't go out and shoot. So I was thinking of how can I, how can I be creative in my little square studio space with with no one there. And I found found myself being more creative than I ever have been. And I realised it was because of limitations. And I realised that for people watching, if you feel Dis, uh, if you feel like oh I can't do what I I can't get I can't achieve that lighting look because I don't have the expensive pro photo strobes for example, you know that's not that's not the case and I'm sure I'm sure you you'll you'll intersect and uh, but limitations can actually like if you only have a speed light, the amount you can do with a speed light is is crazy. So I don't know. Oh, yes. um, do you feel the same way about limitations? Oh yeah. Oh, don't get me started. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, I don't know if I heard that somewhere or if it's, a, it's something I dreamt up, but, it, but it's, it's become a quote uh, that um, limitation is the muse of creativity. Mm. That is something I've been telling myself and people for, year, for years now, because I feel that if you have a blank sheet of paper, where, where, do, you, where do you start? Like, start in the corner, in the middle? Yeah, you yeah, don't know. yeah. So it can't be, it's the... the, the um, possibilities are too many so you can't like fine-tune it if you have a limitation in the beginning then you can you, you can focus on fine-tuning and adapting and creating something maybe bigger than what it would have done if you had anything to do and the limitation can be anything it could be like what gear you use it can also just be uh what what um what your client asks you so like mm. we want this look okay then that's the limitation how can i put my kind of stamp on that that uh, image they, they showed me without copying it and um, still being within the in the within their with their wishes their limitations they set on me and, and the shoot so true so true we uh, um, i'm sure you've had it before where maybe a client as you said uh, you could describe that client like that blank piece of paper where they don't really give you a lot to go by and and you you don't know where to go then you don't know really what they want because they're not really giving you much information they become that blank piece of paper all you need is just something just just something to get you started or mm -hmm. or, or a limitation as you said maybe a lighting setup you're you know you maybe not you don't do often you know, or, or you know something that that's going to step you out of your comfort zone. Would I've read a quote somewhere. I'm going to have to paraphrase it, but it's something like the more you step out of your comfort zone, the bigger that comfort zone becomes. Mm -hmm. So the more you can do that, then the more you feel comfortable with everything else um, around you. And it's, it's just so true. So limitations and pushing yourself out of that, um, out of that um, comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're coming up to the end of the hour, Victor. So I want I've got a couple more questions that I really yeah. do want to ask you. So I want to make sure we have time for those. Um, of course. You can uh, you can ask, answer this in as uh, simple terms or as uh, as in depth as you want. But how would you define success? Yes, uh, you said that could be as short <laughs> or, or long as one or so. Um, well, that's a hard question. Um, would I consider myself successful? No, not yet. Uh, I'm still working for it. Uh, does people around me think I'm successful? I've heard that before. I don't agree because I have my uh, my own ideas of where uh, I want to be to be successful. Um, and in the end, I think that is um, that is success. It's when you're content with where you are, uh, and when you feel that you have reached a place where you don't have to um, second guess yourself and where you don't have to. Um, uh, always look beyond where you are um, it's it's up to you when you are when you are happy with where you are then you're successful I mean and if that means you've got to make a lot of money yes sure if that means you just gotta do what you love sure if that means you have gotta get a dog and a van and go into mm -hmm. the nature sure as success is up to you and if anyone else tells you different they are talking about their own success and not yours so so you've said that success is basically up to us, up to you, whenever you feel like you're there. So do you know or are you reaching for a goal then, Victor, when you know that or when you feel that you're you're successful or you feel more successful? What What's what's the next stage or what what's going to progress you to feeling like you're closer to that point? Knowing myself, I think I won't ever get to that point um, because I also think that when, if I ever get to that point, I'm afraid I will stop trying to, oh, so long, 
No worries, man. I will stop trying to strive. I'm af I'm, that's, that's just something I'm afraid of. Uh, but I mean, if me five years ago would look at where I am today, he would say like, that dude, he's successful. Um, but where I am sitting today, I'm like, no, I have, I, have more, I have more to learn. I have more to do, more places to be, more people to meet and shoot. Uh, I still want to come to, let's see, York, no? Where you live. Oh, okay. <laughs> a lot to, to UK it, it, and meet you and a lot of other, other yeah. photographers over there. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, um, obviously, the door is always open if you ever do find yourself in the southeast of England. And um, uh, if I ever find myself near Sweden, I'll be sure to let you know. The door is open. <laughs> and finally, um, well, uh, you you briefly said it. Then I was going to ask you what what's the best what's the what's the best advice that you've ever been given in in the past, or or what what would you tell yourself if you could go go back to the beginning? So, or what's the best advice you've ever been given? Oof. Um, <laughs> if I were to if my I could tell my past self something, um, oh I don't know. Um, keep doing what you're doing. It apparently works. Um, simple, simple. Yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, apparently on on the right track because you came where you are now, and even I'm not I'm not unhappy where I am right now. It's just I'm I'm not there there yet. I'm still on the road. Well, I think that's fair to um, a lot of creators will think like that. They'll never feel like they're that they, they, they've reached it. And the, there's something nice about that. That means that you're someone that's always going to be striving. You're always moving. You're always trying to. You're always trying to progress, so I think it's good to be in that in that in that stage. I know I feel like that, and I'm sure a lot of people watching here always feel like that. I do also think that it's important, though, when uh, to try and recognise when you've achieved goals, to give yourself permission, to give yourself a little tap on the back, and to uh, acknowledge that you've uh, you've accomplished something, and then and then you can inevitably move on to that ultimate next next goal and that next step. <laughs> yeah, I, I have my, my own kind of gift to give myself of that my, my rule is that whenever I do something that is successful like or a huge step in my career yeah. I'm allowed to buy myself a watch oh really if I can afford it are, are you are you quite are you a watch collector then is it is it a thing uh I didn't want to think it like that but I do own maybe four or five automatic watches and a bunch of uh, quartz watches so you, I mean I do like watches uh, okay all right, well, folks, if you ever see Victor flashing a new watch in his Instagram story, we know that he's in a good place in these achieved something well. Well, we hope that we can see a brand new watch. Are you wearing a watch right now? I am. I'm wearing my birthday watch, actually, actually, which is uh, <laughs> it's a, a very rough Casio G-Shock um, with a bracelet I made myself. Um, oh, that's cool. Because this one can take can take a beating, and I can during the summer I can swim with it, I can go through the woods with it, and I'm not afraid that it will be dented or, or scratched or uh, go out of um, go out go out of sync and stuff like that. Awesome, man! Awesome. Well, Victor, thank you so much for uh, coming on and uh, giving this interview, guys. Uh, show some love for Victor in the comments, and if people want to follow you, if they're not already, where can people find you online? Uh, they preferably find me on Instagram. Um, my account name is the is a Swedish word, uh, a Swedish word, play of words, which is called Grafikeriet. Uh, you're gonna have to write that down somewhere because I don't think many people will be able to write it if they don't speak Swedish. Because even Swedish people have a hard time spelling it or even pronouncing it. Um, but that's that's preferably where you find me. Um, I do have a website which is the same, but dot se, um, and um, yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a an, an, uh, true honor, and uh, I'm very happy to that you selected me for, for this interview. Thank you very much. No, my pleasure, Victor, my pleasure. Um, I just hope that at some point we can actually see each other face to face. We've been yes. friends online for so long, and that is what's that is the good thing about social media, um, is that Indeed. we have this amazing community of people like yourself give just giving us so much lovely free content and inspiring us all the time with every post so that's what i love about social media is the fact that i can connect with people like you because without that we wouldn't be doing this interview uh, yeah. and we wouldn't have 
um 50 odd people watching uh watching us live right now so thanks again for joining me guys thank you for watching and um victor we'll see you soon man thanks again take care